So, we're just getting ready for this um, Lego Shadow Puppet Theatre Workshop. So we'll give people a couple of minutes to tune in if they want to, and then we'll make a start. Okay. Okay, we'll give people another minute or so to join in and then we'll start on the Shadow Puppet Theatres again. Right, okay, let's um, try this one again. So, um, welcome to this Lego Shadow Puppet Theatre workshop. Um, we're gonna be building a working Lego Shadow Puppet Theatre, hopefully. So you will need a couple of things for this. You need um, a sheet of A4 paper, and um, blank paper is best, um, but if you've got lined paper, lined paper works. It needs to be relatively thin, um, so any standard kind of um, printer paper or um, notebook paper should do about A4 size. Um, a torch or a smartphone with a light feature is pretty helpful as well. It needs to be quite a focused source of light to get the shadows working properly. Um, you also need, um, and this is the best bit for me anyway, uh, you need a pile of Lego bricks and some minifigures as well um, to build the theatre. Um, and some colouring pencils and a bit of paper is optional but might help a little bit later on and we'll explain what you're going to do with those um, a little bit later. Okay, so let's start um, by uh, just talking through what we need for the theatre um, to get it to work. So like any theatre we need a stage for um, actors and some scenery to create the scenes and manage the plot. Um, because it's a shadow theatre, um, we're going to project the image of people um, and scenery onto a screen, which is our bit of paper. So we need a screen and a light, and we also need an audience to watch because it's no fun without an audience. So this is, ooh, let's just make sure that's all in camera. Yeah, I still haven't quite mastered that. So here's the basic thing um, and uh, how it works. So we have a stage, Oops. put it with the other hand. So we have a stage here, which the actors sit on. So you can see my very bad drawing of an actor there. We have an audience on this side. So here's our audience watching the play. And this screen in the middle is our bit of paper and that's what everything's projected onto and to get it to project we've got a light here which is shining past everything on the stage onto our screen which is what the audience sees so that's the basic premise of how it works so we're gonna do a quick um, showcase of one I built earlier in true Blue Peter style. So let me just angle the camera and I'm just going to go and close my curtains and dim the lights a little bit. <coughs> so, like any theater, um, this has a what's called a proscenium arch, which is this section around um, around the stage area and if we take this piece of paper out you can see the stage with some people and I've got a bit of scenery at the moment which is a tree so we put that back down you can see with a bit of light in the background yep hopefully you can see we've got a figure you can see a tree and depending on where we place the light you can also see there's another character 
So the idea is that this proscenium arch captures what's on stage, so it frames what's going to happen on stage here, and it's also quite helpful in keeping this bit of paper propped up straight and nice and tight. Um, but we're going to walk you step through step um, on how to build um, the stage and then the proscenium arch and a little bit of scenery, and then we've got a working shadow theatre we can play with. So let me just turn the light off. <coughs> okay. So let's have a look. So we're going to start with the stage, and it's quite important that this is all a sturdy base. So I'm going to use one of these base plates. You can use any other part, and I'll see. So you might have these, which are from more modern sets, um, just large plates, or what we call the thin belt. And that is quite a good solid base to build on as well if you don't have one of the thinner base plates, which are sort of almost paper thin, like you can see there. Okay, so let's let's move on. I'm just going to move the microphone because I think it might be a little bit quiet there. Can you st can everybody hear me in this podcast? Let's have a look. I can't actually see comments. Where have they gone? Let's have a look. Just open up the other tab and I'll just check everybody can follow along okay. Oh, it's loading very slowly. Ah. Yep, it looks like everybody's following along okay. So let's go back to that screen. Okay, let's get on with building this theatre. So I am going to tilt the um, camera down a little bit so you can see what we're building. So the, st the ideal stage is probably about five bricks high I've found. Um, so five bricks high and a minimum size, a minimum length of about 16 studs. So let's take this bit here and make sure it's in focus. So 16 studs or studs are what we call the bumps. So you might call them bumps on a Lego part, but 16 long by 18 is about the smallest stage that you want. You can build a much bigger stage if you want, and I'm going to build one which is twice that length. So two times 16, 32 studs. Um, and we're gonna build that at five bricks high. And the way we're gonna do that is Hopefully I've counted all of these bricks properly. So we're going to start building the stage like these. And it happens that these bricks, handily, are five bricks high. And quite a nice colour too. Okay, so this may take you a little bit longer, but um, this isn't the exciting bit. The exciting bit is the play, so we want to get, get to that. Okay. So that's the front of our stage and you don't necessarily have to fill in the whole gap along the front um, but I like doing that because it blocks out any light coming from behind so all you see is what's on stage and it doesn't ruin the illusion too much hopefully right we need some other parts at the back okay so we're just going to put these like this in our stage and the best bit about the shadow puppet theater is it doesn't matter what color lego bricks you use because it's all going to be in shadow so we're not going to see any of these colors all we'll see is a shadow of what's projected so you can go as wild as you like with the colors okay so that is our stage done and i'll just twirl that round so you can do different size stages um, you can build them slightly differently using whatever parts you have, but about five bricks tall and about 16 studs long by eight is the minimum I'd say for a reasonable stage. 
if you can build it longer build it longer because you can get more details in okay so we're going to start on that proscenium arch which is the bit that frames um, frames the theatre for us and we're going to do that using some of these so a piece of paper a4 paper on its side is 210 millimeters or 21 centimeters which is roughly about 23 bricks high so we, what we're going to do is build the initial slopes uh, the initial sides up to 20 bricks tall and that worked um, pretty well earlier so we'll give that a go so that's six on that side six on this side okay so that's eight and ten do ten on this side okay and another so we're up to 12 bricks high if I've counted that right that's 14 16 18 20 and the important thing to remember here is not to attach the front bit this proscenium arch to the stage because our paper is going to slot in between which we'll show you in a minute and we're just going to do a quick cheat and make sure these are the same height let's just tilt that up for you So they're the same height. So they're 20 bricks tall and one each side. And let's do a test fitting with some paper for our screen. <coughs> okay, so here's our piece of paper for the screen. You can see it fits quite neatly in against the proscenium arch. So one of the one of the benefits of building this bit at the front is it keeps the paper nice and stiff because we don't want it so this is the stage so we don't want it flopping down on the actors midway through or destroying the scenery but you can see it can still flop backwards so we need uh, some more parts to prop it up there so you want to trap the paper between a layer of bricks at the front and then one on the stage like that and it doesn't matter what color the bricks are on the back here. So we'll go a bit wild and use a lighter yellow color. So that's, you can see hopefully, that piece of paper is quite firmly wedged in. It's not gonna destroy anything, hopefully. And now we're gonna build the top of the proscenium arch. So we're going to build something that joins these together and just hides this last bit of paper at the top, make it look a little bit neater. So let's move this out the way. Okay. Let's see. So this is going to need to be a 32 stud long on mine, isn't it? So I'm trying to do the maths. Right. So that should work. And to make sure this is quite strong, because it doesn't need to hold weight, but it does need to hold itself up. We're just going to use a layer of bricks over the top and hopefully I've got enough in my pile. Yes, that worked out a bit too smoothly. That's suspicious. Okay, and then we do another one. So we're gonna put another layer of plates on top so it doesn't bend so much and it should be a lot stronger. And it looks like I might have to go and look through my parts because I'm missing some. So give me a second and I'll find the two missing parts. <coughs> Oops. So, you can see we got a layer of plate and then we have a layer of brick and then we have a layer of plate on top again. And if we give it a bit of a flex and a bit of a wobble it's fairly strong, so that will do us nicely. Okay, let's have another look at this. So, we're getting there. We've got a bit of a working theatre there. Yep. 
and we can still take this piece of paper out just by sliding it up and down. So that's the stage and the senior march done. So we're going to put that to one side. This all feels very blue Peter, doesn't it? Uh, and next, <coughs> we said you needed bricks and minifigures, so you might want a couple of characters like these. So if you dig some out, they can be whatever you like, and we're going to develop a little bit of a story. And the, a good way of doing that, to develop a story for a play, if I just tilt this down to my... Yep. Is to draw four boxes for a short story. Like this. Okay, so it's a little bit like a comic, and we're going to draw out uh, what we call a storyboard, a little bit of a plan for the story. So I think we might do something um, castle related. Um, so I feel like building a castle later. So let's start with maybe somebody being a bit lost and they could be lost in the woods so maybe you need some trees to build and then so that person keeps walking and then oh they meet another person okay and then What we're going to do is have that person help. You have to excuse my horrible handwriting. I'm too used to typing these days. So our second character is going to help the first find their way. And we're going to have a castle. And that's what the character is looking for. So hopefully that looks suitably castly and we need our character in the end yay so that's a really simple story um, because I wanted to focus more on building than drawing something out so the character is going to be lost in the woods so we need two characters and some trees she's going to find the other character um, she is going to follow their advice and then she's going to find the castle so that's quite a short play if you want a longer one you could try doing six squares or even ten squares and making a much longer play okay so it is time for our actors now we've got a um, a bit of an idea about what we're doing we've got a plot and we're going to follow along so we need a way of getting the actors on and off the stage and a good way to do this is really long bricks like this and if you put the character on one end you can move them in and out of the stage so let's get our stage back okay I'm gonna take the piece of paper out so we can actually see what's going on for a second so that's off stage and then you can move them like that ooh that would happen wouldn't it so yes, make sure they're securely attached to the brick. So you can move them in and out like that. Or you can use some longer flat parts we call plates like that. And if you put them on one edge, you can move those in and out as well. Now for scenery, we need a forest. So should we start by building some trees? Let's find some bricks for some trees. Right. Let's angle that down for you. There. Yep. So, building very simple trees, just a uh, a very tall brick, which is what we would call a one by one by five brick, and then a brick on top with a stud or a bump on side, and we call those snot bricks. So that stands for studs not on top because it's got a stud on top, but it's also got a stud not on the top. So that's a snot brick. And then we've got one of these leafy pieces for a tree. And as a simple tree in a shadow theatre, that works quite well because remember, we don't see any of the colours, we just see the outline of what we're building here. And 
There's definitely more than one tree in a forest, so we need to. Um, yep. Yep. We need to build at least two trees, and then we can sort of call that a forest. It's a bit of a lazy forest, but it's a good start. And there's only so much room on our stage as well. Okay. <coughs> We're going to build a castle next as well, so I'm going to do that twisting around a bit. So I found this arch earlier, which I think makes quite a good um, a good start for a castle. So you can use any colour bricks you like. I just happen to have quite a lot of light grey bricks lying around. So how's this going to work? So we're just starting to form a, a castle and it's probably worth noting that um, we're still going to build some turrets on these but we need to make sure the height of this isn't larger than about 15 uh, bricks high because otherwise it's going to go over the top of the proscenium arch and ruin the effect. So this, the tallest you could probably make something is about 15 bricks high but that's more than high enough for a a castle and you'll see how that's going to work in a second. Well. So we're still building this castle up. Trying to make it it's getting a bit taller. And we're just getting some space ready for some turrets to go on because you can't have a castle without turrets. And these round parts make really good turrets. So we're going to have turrets on those. Two of those should do. And we've also got some cool parts for the roof of those turrets. So we want pointy turrets. Uh, and these cone parts work really well. And it doesn't matter they're not grey because we're not going to see the colours. Okay. So we've got a, a basic looking castle. But this will actually... Sometimes the simple things work better in the shadow theatres. So this will look pretty good I think. We're going to start attaching the scenery into our theatre. <coughs> okay. So we're going to put some trees in for our forest, like that. And I think we're about done. So it's important to remember the screen is going to be this side, so the audience is going to be about where you're looking from and the light's going to be coming from behind this way and shine lights on here and make shadows wherever there's something in the way onto the screen. So anything that is at the back of the stage on this side that's going to appear bigger than if it was closer to the front of the stage because of its distance from the light. Okay, so let's give this one a quick go. I need to find a piece of paper again. We're going to put our piece of paper down like that. So you can't see a lot at the moment, but we're about ready. Do you remember what we were going to do for our um, play? We were going to do something like this. So somebody gets lost in the woods or the forest. They bump into somebody else in the woods who might be a woodcutter or something. Um, that person helps them and say, gives them some directions which they follow and then they end up finding the castle which is what they're looking for. So we've built the forest, we've built the castle and we have, where have my actors gone? We have two actors ready and willing and hopefully a little bit more rehearsed than they were earlier. Um, so I hope they remember their lines. We're going to try this now 
Let's get rid of that. Okay, let's just make sure that's all in the camera for you. Yeah. And just going to set my light up so you can get an adult to hold the light for you or you could try building something out of Lego um, to hold up your torch so you don't have to think about that and it's not wobbly when you're trying to trying to perform so yeah let's see so you can see we've got our castle here which looks pretty good even though it was a bit maybe a little bit messy as a as a model and then we've got some trees here and the simple trees work quite well you can see they're meant to be trees maybe look a little bit like a forest hopefully right and let's go here so let me make sure I've got the right characters so okay here's our uh, first character uh, and my acting voice is all terrible so I won't I won't do them um, oh go on then I will okay oh I'm a bit lost in the woods that is the only acting voice I can do I'm sorry um, okay so there's one and then oh here's our second character and let's move them out of the woods a little bit the castle is this way okay thank you okay and our original character the protagonist is now in the castle so you can see her just under there so that's the very basic idea behind the shadow theatres um, there's lots of other things you could try so you could try experimenting with different stage heights different sizes of stage you could try and make some scenery that you can move in and out so you could change the scenery um, and move between different scenes like a proper theater so you might actually have a lot a, a lot bigger forest made with lots more trees and then take those all off from the stage and then put an even bigger castle model on and have the actors walk around those um, you could try what's really cool is you could try parts with transparent colors so if you've got any Lego cars you might have some headlights that are red or you might have some indicator parts that are orange and if you put those um, on the stage some of that color will shine through so it's quite good if you want a fire effect you could have a fiery dragon at the castle for the next theme um, you could do all sorts of things with that if you're a little bit more advanced as a builder you could try using some Lego Technic gear wheels and you could um, you could get things moving on the stage so you could get things moving up and down or spinning in circles <coughs> um, if you find that the light is too bright on the um, shadow theater and you can't really see a lot if you're using very thin paper that can happen so just try one more sheet of paper or maybe a, a slightly thicker paper card is usually a little bit too thick to let enough light through to work but you might need to experiment depending on what type of card or paper you're using. Um, you could also try controlling your characters suspended from a bit of string from the top of the uh, from the top of the theatre, like a more traditional puppet. And you can also. I'm just going to remove some scenery. And we're going to go back down. I'm just going to move the camera back down in a second. You can also experiment with different types of puppets to go in your theatre. So we built um, quite a simple puppet, which was just a minifig on a bit of Lego that you could move in and out. You could develop something a little bit more like a, a sort of Punch and Judy character, more like a proper puppet. So here's a pirate themed one rather than the castle themed one. So he's got his sword he can wave around. Arr. And this is actually fairly simple to build, so you need quite a sturdy um, section at the back to hold. Um, and you, you can see the back of his head and his hat's held on. And then these green parts are hinges, so they allow 
a little bit of movement in these arms so he can wave his arm or he can wave his sword around and you could make them even more complex you could have um, multiple poles to move their arms up and down or you could even try adding legs or making a mouth that moves up and down as it speaks but you might just remember you need one hand to hold the puppet and another to do the movement so it might get a little bit tricky with just one of you doing that so let's have a quick look at how that looks in our shadow theatre okay Ooh, the sword's fallen off typical right right there we go so you can see you can see my hand a little bit so this is where you might need a stage that's a bit taller but you can see he's a pirate hopefully and he's waving his sword at someone or something maybe a naughty monkey on the pirate ship okay so that is about all we've got for this um, shadow puppet theatre workshop um, I'll post some step-by-step -step photos of how you can um, replicate the stage area <coughs> and I really love to see what you've been building in terms of theatres and your plays as well so if you want to send me some photos of your stage and all the scenery or a quick video of a play um, I'd really love to see those so thanks for um, listening and hopefully we'll see you again soon.